Aloha, I'm Alicia Chohan, and I have the great honor of interviewing one of the world's leading marine biologists here on the island of Kauai on a beautiful day in Hanalei Bay. My name is Terry Lilly, and I'm a marine biologist here on the beautiful island of Kauai in the Hawaiian Islands. I do research here on our ocean and underwater environments, studying everything from the whales, dolphins, turtles, down to the sea urchins, fish, and lobsters. I'm doing a very long-term underwater project here on the island of Kauai to educate the school kids throughout the Hawaiian Islands and the public about our changing ocean conditions. What passions did you pursue growing up? I was very fortunate as a kid growing up in Southern California with my parents who were surfers and divers, professional athletes, and really loved the outdoors. With my two brothers, uh, all the way back to the age of two years old, three years old, we learned how to surf. And by the time I was four, my dad taught me how to spearfish. I got to see my first shark out underwater at the age of five years old. After that, I spent most of my life as a young kid running around in the mountains collecting reptiles. I had hawks and falcons and owls, and I made my very, very, very first underwater movie housing and movie camera all by myself at age 12. By the time I got done with high school, I had a collection of over a thousand reptiles, and I'd been all up and down the west coast of the United States surfing and diving studying the marine life and studying the other creatures like the hawks and the snakes. I ended up going to Cal Poly University and my parents paid my way to get a degree in biological sciences. And after school, I went around the world as a professional surfer and I also started the first ever captive breeding zoo for endangered reptiles. I ended up selling the zoo a little bit later down the road, which funded my around-the-world study to document our reefs and marine life on planet Earth. The reason why I wanted to do that is with the changing climate and environment and rising sea levels, I could really see the ocean was changing, including the surf spots and the coral reefs. So I was fortunate enough to go to a number of different countries and video over 3,000 hours worth of our changing reef systems in marine life, all the way from the whales and dolphin down to the little lobsters and sea urchins. This led to an underwater movie series that I'm doing for schools all throughout the Hawaiian Islands and a number of different television educational shows. What led you to marine research in Kauai's waters? In 2011, I sold my reptile zoo in California and that funded an around-the-world study to uh, document the reefs and marine life uh, underwater and above water. So I bought the cameras and the Sony underwater movie cameras and I moved to Kauai a few years before that and set up operation here for doing a series, underwater video series, uh, called the World's Guide to Hawaiian Reef Fish and the World's Guide to Hawaiian Marine Life. And that was for a nonprofit here in Kauai. And the intention was to do this underwater video series uh, to donate to all the schools for free uh, for education here in the Hawaiian Islands. So I moved here full time and spent over a thousand hours up and down the coastline here and underwater with my high def video camera. And subsequently, I've videoed now almost every known species here uh, in the Hawaiian Islands that lives in shallow water down to about 100 feet deep. During the process of videoing all of these cool critters and making this movie series, I discovered a really terrible coral disease out at Tunnels Reef in 2012. I didn't know what it was at the time, but the corals all started dying and they looked like they were bleached and covered with white, uh, sticky stuff. It was something very strange. I've spent all my life in the water and I've never seen anything like it. So what I did is I reported that to the USGS and the University of Hawaii scientists that are good friends of mine, and they came over to do an investigation to see what it was. It ended up being a black band coral disease. It's a cyanobacterial disease, and it turns out that it's killed over a million corals on the North Shore of Kauai here within the last three years. Have you made any discoveries as to what is the cause of the deterioration? When we discovered this coral disease here in Kauai, it had damaged and killed so much of the reef. Immediately I was interested to see 
how did this compare with other places in the Hawaiian Islands and other places in the world? We absolutely know that rising sea levels, changing in ocean chemistry, global climate change, pollution, runoff, pesticides from farmlands, we know all of this stuff is killing coral reefs around the planet, but how much of the reef is dying? So what I did is a three-year study where I went to French Polynesia, Tahiti, Moorea, Bora Bora, and then I also went to all the other Hawaiian islands from the Big Island to Nihihau and documented with high def video the reefs there to see how much of their reefs were dying at the same time how much of the Kauai reefs were dying on the North Shore here near the Hanalei area. What I found was really alarming. Most of the places in the Pacific where I went to the reefs were dying at about 1% a year. Now here on the North Shore of Kauai we lost over 30% of our coral reefs in two years. So it turns out that the death rate of the reefs here on the North Shore of Kauai is astronomically faster and more widespread than anywhere else so far we've documented in the Pacific Ocean. Where else in the world are there examples of coral reef deterioration, perhaps to the extent that it is here on Kauai? Once we documented with the University of Hawaii and the USGS Infectious Disease Department and the main marine biologist for NOAA, how many of the corals were dying here on the North Shore of Kauai between 2012 and 2014? All of us were perplexed as to what in the world could be killing this many corals so quickly along a 30 mile stretch of coastline. The south side of Kauai is doing much better. The corals there aren't dying near as fast as they are on the North Shore here. Down in the Nepali coastline at the coves at Nualolo and Mililii, over 95% of the reef died in one year in 2014. This led to a really massive study done by the USGS and UH a DNA and biological study. And what they found that it indeed was a cyanobacteria that was killing and eating the corals, but it didn't explain why it was eating the corals. Most corals have a good immune and defense system to fight off bacteria, but these corals appear to have a compromised immune system. As of right now, in 2016, we're still not sure what's killing the corals here, but we have analyzed a very big electrical discharge into the ocean by the U.S. military here in their war games that they call RIMPAC that they operate on the North Shore of Kauai. We've actually monitored this discharge and it's billions of watts of electricity that's flowing into the ocean here. So we're assuming that that may be lowering the immune system of the corals, but we haven't proven that yet. We also know that there's a massive amount of farm chemicals up down the North Shore of Kauai here that are flowing out to sea. Now those farm chemicals are used all over the Hawaiian Islands. They're produced by companies like Monsanto and Syngenta. But we have a large amount of rain here on the North Shore of Kauai and a lot of these chemicals are getting flushed out to sea. So we know we have those problems. As a matter of fact, if you listen, you can even hear the military helicopters flying overhead right now doing their war game practices right off Honolai. What is the importance of the coral reefs to the oceans and the people's web of life? A lot of people don't realize if we lose our coral reefs on planet Earth, the Earth will not cease to exist in the form it is right now. Coral reefs are the baby farm, the hatchery for the sea creatures, and the ocean is 79% of planet Earth. The coral reef is the most biodiverse place on the planet. It has more species than anywhere else on the planet Earth, and it completely connects the web of life for all living creatures here on this planet. So if we lose a coral reef, we simply are going to lose the environment and our own way of life here on this planet and obviously that would be foolish to do. The other thing about the coral reefs that people don't consider until it actually happens, coral reefs keep homes from falling into the water. Just that simple. Corals drag on the underside of the wave causing the wave to break and make it hollow and for the wave to expend its energy onto the reef and not the beach. This is what makes the surf good at our famous surf spots like Pipeline and Waimea Bay and Sunset and all around the world is the corals cause the waves to be hollow. So coral reefs actually help support a multi-billion dollar surfing industry. 
a tourist industry for divers, a tourist industry for snorkelers. Hundreds of billions of dollars in the world is made off healthy living coral reefs. The other thing that's really bad about the coral reefs, especially here on the north shore of Kauai, dying as quickly as they are, is that now the waves aren't breaking on the reef as much and they expend 60,000 tons of energy per wave. We have had 40 foot surf here the last couple days and we just were all down watching this happen in person. When these waves break on the sand in the beach, they cause accelerated erosion and houses and businesses are falling into the ocean. Just that simple. Every coral is equal to a certain amount of lost money when the coral dies. How does climate change affect the health of the reefs? As you all know, by just simply picking up the newspaper or watching the TV news every day, that the Earth is going through an accelerated climate change right now. That basically means that the temperatures are warming up on planet Earth, on the land, and also the sea temperatures. This causes a complete change in weather, currents, upwelling, surf, and all kinds of activities underneath the surface of the sea. What it's doing to the coral reefs is raining havoc on them. You will see a lot of articles and a lot of movies that we do about coral bleaching. That's when the coral loses algae that grows within inside the coral. Corals actually are pure white, but they have an algae farm that grows inside of the coral polyps. This gives the coral its beautiful colors of blue, pinks, purples, yellows, and greens. When the sea levels rise too quickly, sometimes the algae dies within the coral and causes it to turn pure white. That's what's called bleaching. This will actually kill the coral and the coral reefs if it continues for a long period of time. So that's happening around the world and it is devastating some of our coral reefs. There's not a lot we can do about that though. The coral diseases are different. Coral diseases are just like a disease that human beings get. A bleaching is kind of like a human being getting a sunburn. A coral disease is like a human being getting cancer or AIDS or any other kinds of disease. So what's happening with the corals when they get weakened, something in the environment causes them to be stressed out and weakened, then whatever bacteria that's in the ocean that likes to eat coral is going to be successful at breaking down and consuming the coral. When the corals are healthy, they can fight diseases, but when they get into a weakened state, they often succumb to diseases. And that's what we're having here on the North Shore of Kauai. What solutions are you personally involved in? Over the past three years, I've been fortunate enough to go around the world and give talks about this so-called Kauai Coral Disease. I've been working with and have given talks at Scripps Institute at the University of Hawaii, NOAA, USGS, uh, for Surfrider and other nonprofit organizations. And the one thing that I found out in my lecture circuit, and I've also done a number of television shows, one on National Geographic, a number of news stories, the front cover of the LA Times. Uh, over two million people now have read about and heard about the Kauai coral disease through our social media and educational programs. So what I saw is that people aren't communicating. Scientists are not communicating. There's scientists that are working on coral diseases all around the world and none of us share our knowledge. There are scientists in one group that study one part of the reef and right next door other scientists studying another part of the reef and they don't even share their information. So what that led me to do is to form and start a new nonprofit where we can get all of these scientists and educators, TV producers, business people, schools, government agencies all working on the same page and studying this Kauai coral disease. So we formed a group called Reef Guardians Hawaii which is a 501c3 uh, charitable organization here in Hawaii, and we're actually going to operate it worldwide. Reef Guardians, the purpose of the organization is basically to study our marine environment with the best possible technology and the best possible scientist, and then to share that knowledge with the scientific community, the public, government institutes, politicians, all the way to the White House. 
it's really important that we need to do this because the environment's changing so quickly. We have to have a good format for sharing this type of scientific information. What can the public do to help the reefs through Reef Guardians? The bottom line is, if we're going to save our coral reefs and the environment here on planet Earth, it's up to you. It's up to the public to put in the effort and the finances to study and protect our ocean and marine environment. It's not up to the scientists and the government officials and the nonprofit groups. There simply aren't enough of us out there at this point in time to make that much of an impact other than doing a lot of really good firsthand science and educating. It's up to the public to fund groups like Reef Guardians Hawaii and we will utilize those funds to do the best possible scientific studies and to educate everyone day by day on my Facebook page, and it's Terry, T-E-R-R-Y, Lily, L-I-L-L-E-Y, and also on our Reef Guardians Hawaii webpage, and in the local media using television, news, and radio. But the bottom line is, without the public support, the public needs to tell the politicians, we need more studies here on the island of Kauai. We need more studies all throughout the Pacific on our coral reefs, because they're so important. So the public is the one that really is going to be the mechanism here to get the job done and save our environment. So once again, make your voice be heard. Tell your local political representatives that we need way more studies and way more scientists out there in the ocean studying our coral reefs. And then please help fund our nonprofit and other nonprofits so we can get the proper equipment, scientists, and people in the water to do the needed research to report to you, the public. How are you using media to create further awareness of the coral reefs to the rest of the world? Over the last two years, we've really been reaching out to the media personnel and folks from the television stations, newspaper writers, magazine articles, editorials, all the way to the use of Facebook and other social media events. It's really been very helpful. We've done about 20 different television shows now on this Kauai coral disease and our degradating coral reefs here in Kauai and on the Hawaiian Islands. And we've also done dozens of radio shows, front cover news articles, but one of the most important things we've done almost on a day-by-day -day basis is using Facebook. One of the things I can do now with my high-tech underwater movie cameras is I can go out on my research boat, go a half mile out to sea, dive down for an hour, shoot a video of the reef, document the corals and marine life, come back in, download it, and post pictures and movies on Facebook for millions of people to see. This has really been an extremely powerful tool. So right now, we're really looking out to the media outlet personnel, professional writers, TV hosts, all of them, to do a whole series of articles about our coral reef problems, just like we're doing in this wonderful interview today.